A fairly historic week for the market begins with the crash in the dollar. I think that's an important anchoring for our conversation here as we figure out what's at stake in the first time, really, in like kind of a generation of traders, basically post GFC, that have never gone into an event for the Fed and FOMC not knowing with more than basically a coin flip chance what's going to happen. Again, the journal article from the Friday session really put 50 bips back into play. Powell sounded victorious, as we said here from the get-go, and Jackson Hole, that tone appealed to the everyday person. No matter what your understanding of markets were, if you heard the tone from Jerome Powell at Jackson Hole, and then Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen as well in the aftermath. These last three months have been marked by a good deal of optimism and sound of victory from our financial and economic leaders. That to me sounds like people that are very ready to pull the trigger on 50 basis points, especially if you consider the possibility that if you're in Powell's shoes and everyone from the Trump administration transition team says he's gonna go, if you feel you need to cut to securely land softly, then why wouldn't you pull that lever just for sake of your own legacy, perhaps? But I don't want to get too far off reading the players at the table. Let's go with the cards that we have right now. Until stocks break back out, the red light's there. I don't see us getting stuck in the same range for as long as we did back in August. But again, the dollar really serves as the anchor here with the fresh break down today. Dollar got hit on Friday, too, following the journal article. It was suspiciously strong, the dollar, in the couple weeks prior, despite fresh lows in yields. So to see the dollar join to the downside in the last 48 hours of trading is a big deal that very much puts 50 bips alive going into Wednesday. However, as a caution before, be careful rooting for a dollar crash. I still think people are in a mindset that we have to get out of right now. Take it from the coiners. Look at how soft Bitcoin is and downtrending despite the big crash in the dollar. They're certainly having to learn the hard way that lower dollar is not an obvious bull case for a risk asset. And that applies to stocks as well, especially in a world where we import a lot more than we export. The low dollar isn't exactly a great welcome thing. Also, if it's telling us that the Fed has to act here to get ahead of weakness in the economy, that's where the lower dollar hasn't been obviously good for stocks either. Keep in mind that when we got the volatility in August that was tied to the yen, that was as we were pricing in all these things, 50 basis points, a bull steepening in the curve. Look at the way the tens and the twos as those have opened up. That's been since July as the economic data has softened, but inflation has also come down substantially. That opened up the possibility for a lot of currency vault. So right there alone, you've got a recent example where a big dollar drop off wasn't a positive thing because it threw currency markets out of whack. Now, maybe we've accustomed and normalized a bit the yen carry trade, but it still is making higher highs again on the chart. No one seems to really care too much other than Vincent Dillard. Also, look at the chart of the NASDAQ for further evidence. Obviously, the NASDAQ high was in July. The whole rotation concept that we've been toying with is what has stalled the market out to basically put the NASDAQ kind of in this triangle. And that's where this week gets so hard to pick a direction. It kind of just looks like a coin flip, much like the odds for the Fed, because we just don't know. And obviously, right now, it's not clear either what actually the response would be. You could argue the 50 bips opens up the room for all the small cap, low quality stuff to really run with it, but all that has to add up to offset whatever tech weakness there is. The correlation between the Russell and the NASDAQ, if it comes together, if you see the two rallying in harmony, then you've got everything you want from the bullish standpoint. But until then, we still have to learn that 50 bips is going to be a good thing because it's live. And so far, the market hasn't been certain it's a good thing. It should be a fun week. Doubt we'll get stuck in that range. We got some action coming. Have a great night.